Uh, so let's first define what is the inductance. Uh, it's really difficult to define it, but this is uh, what uh, we can find in the literature. Inductance is intrinsic characteristics of the coil, and it defines the capacity of the coil to store and return magnetic energy. And uh, the inductance is actually like the conductor for the electric current, so the, the inductance for the magnetic flux is like a permeable. I hope that uh, you also have the definition. Please put it on the chat if possible. Yeah, so uh, why uh, we want to compute the inductance and uh, which inductance uh, to compute and how to compute and measure inductances. So these are the three points I am going to present today. So the first thing is why you need to compute inductance. Usually we uh, compute inductance uh, to define the used order model of a given uh, electromagnetic device. It can be transformer or actuator or it can be like here a motor. So we can uh, see or define three, three use cases of this reduced order model. It's mainly to use it in uh, the system and control uh, common uh, workflow. We have for a permanent magnet machine, for instance, uh, a pack model, a simplified pack model defined with LDLQ. Uh, so we need this uh, LDLQ computation. Or uh, we can uh, use a reduced order model uh, using lookup tables, which is more accurate. And actually, if we compare these two methods to a direct cost simulation, which is possible to do with activate and flux, for instance, this direct cost simulation is the most accurate one, but unfortunately, the solving time is by hours and not with seconds or minutes. So the first one is the park model, simplified park model, and the best com compromise between time computation and accuracy is uh, using the lookup type. So the, the second point for the computation of the inductances is to have the time response, especially for a high power induction machine or high power synchronous generator, even the high, uh, high power transformers. This is the same thing for the linear actuators. We need to know this uh, time constant, at least for uh, modelization, because now the scenario definition and the time st step you are going to do uh, to use in advance, and then you, are, you have adapted scenario for your uh, device. We need to compute the inductances because these are a sizing element, especially for permanent magnet machine, wound field synchronous machine, and synchronous relaxed machine. So the, the, the ratio between the inductance, direct inductance, and the quadrature inductance, which we call uh, silency, is will define if the machine can go to the high speed called flux weakening. Uh, this silency will uh, add some uh, reluctant torque, uh, which is can in some cases useful and torque cripple will in some cases uh, not useful. So this is really depending on the, this ratio uh, LQ and uh, LD. Uh, for synchronous reluctance machine, parameters like the torque, power factor, and torque cripple are really uh, directly linked to this LDU, uh, LD and LQ uh, inductances. So then we know why we need to compute these inductances and which model, reduced order model we are going to, do, to, to have, then which inductances to compute. Uh, so once again, let's come back to the definition. This is really a simple case where we have two coils. So a self-inductance actually is made by the, what we call magnetization or magnetizing inductance and the leakage inductance. This magnetizing inductance will give actually uh, what we call mutual inductance as well. So uh, from this self-inductance and the mutual inductance, uh, we can uh, build an equivalent model of any device. Here, this is a motor where we have three, three phases on the stator three phases on the rotor and then we can really have this uh, matrix of self inductances uh, and mutual inductances between the phases on the stator and the phases on, on the rotor and between the phases on, of the stator and the rotor. So yeah, self inductance which is uh, made by uh, magnetizing inductance and leakage inductance and mutual inductance. These are the most important one we are going to see and for our reduced order model. So let's have a look on leakage inductances. So uh, the focus here is made on a radial flux machine so we can have 
when we consider the section of the machine, we can see uh, leakage inductances on the, the stator slot. If there, there are slots on the rotor, we can see as well uh, leakage inductances on stator uh, or the rotor slot. This image is uh, actually extracted from uh, Alge book. And uh, if we can see uh, on the PhD from Thomas Lugan, we can see really a beautiful picture on of the zigzag leakage magnetic flux, which gives this leakage zigzag inductance. And there is a leakage flux between the, the two, actually. Yeah, these are really difficult to, to compute. But the good thing is that if you are using the finite element computation, all of these leakage inductances are already taken into account and considered during your computation. So the, if you are in 2D, then there are other inductances to, to consider, which, uh, which are mainly end, end winding inductances. And uh, if you are dealing with an uh, induction machine, there is ring portion impedance and where you have the need of this ring portion inductance. So for the ring portion inductance, there are some formula, mainly a tricky formula. This is possible to, to find in our tutorial for a skewed, uh, skewed uh, rotor example. You can deter determine it also in Black 3D. This is what we published on, uh, in a, a, an article uh, where we uh, computed thanks to Flux 3D, the impedance of the, the end ring portion. For the end winding uh, inductance, always this uh, tricky formula uh, where we can use this formula to compute them. And this is mainly what we are using in flux motor, for instance. But uh, there is a possibility to compute them also with Flux 3D. And there is a tutorial uh, available from the supervisor. Okay. Then this is about leakage inductances. Then uh, let's now talk about uh, the, the self inductance actually, which is defined by the magnetic flux uh, and the current we supply, we use to supply this uh, the coil. So uh, here for the self inductance, we can uh, define two uh, kinds of inductances, a static inductance uh, and the dynamic inductance. So as you can see here, if we uh, measure the magnetic flux versus the current supply of this coil, uh, if there is a magnetic circuit there, we will reach a kind of saturation. So uh, a static, the static uh, inductance is really phi by E. And the dynamic inductance is the variation of the magnetic flux versus the variation of current. Sum. In the linear zone, uh, these static and uh, dynamic inductance are equal. Uh, but when it comes to the saturation, uh, these inductances are different. So why we need the static and dynamic inductance? So uh, the best way to see that uh, their importance is to move to park model and compute then this, use this dynamic and static inductances to compute the torque. And in the formula of the torque, actually, the static inductance is giving only uh, the mean value of the torque and uh, the dynamic inductance can help us to capture uh, the time harmonics of the torque. And this is available for the voltage and uh, the other quantities actually. So since we are talking about the park model, let's move to the control command uh, and see uh, what is uh, needed there. Uh, PSIM uh, is our reference for the motor control and uh, there are really a lot of, lot of models and then there is an article on the community which make really uh, a recap of uh, all the models available in PSIM. So here I am going to consider only three examples. The first one is a PMSM, a Permanent Magnet Synchronous Machine. There is what we call a linear model where we ask only LD and LQ uh, inductance, but it's possible also to use a lookup table here. And this lookup table can be generated from Flux motor or it can be generated from Flux 2D as well. Yeah. Then if we move to the, the, the wound field synchronous machine, uh, there is a linear model asking for more inductances. As you can see here in this model, we need a stator leakage inductance, uh, D axis magnetizing inductance, uh, Q axis magnetizing inductance. We need the field, uh, the field uh, winding leakage inductance uh, referred to the stator. Another inductance uh, for the rotor damping in D axis and uh, the other one in uh, rotor damping cage on, uh, leakage inductance on Q axis. So as you can see, there are uh, many of them. We will see uh, later on uh, how to recover this kind of inductances. And uh, the, the, the third example I want to show here is uh, the induction machine. The induction machine is uh, in, in 
PCM is using uh, the steady state scheme, uh, single phase equivalent scheme, where we ask for the, the stator uh, winding linkage inductance, the rotor winding linkage inductance, and the magnetizing inductance actually. This is, uh, this is the, the model we have, and we do have other models for induction machine uh, as well. Yeah, so this is, uh, uh, this is about uh, PCM, and let's see now how to compute and measure these inductances. Um, we have really a lot of methods to compute uh, inductance using the magnetic flux measured on the coil or using the magnetic energy. Uh, once again, uh, we are talking about uh, dynamic inductance, but it's uh, the variation of the magnetic flux measured on the coil uh, uh, divided by the variation of the current supply. We can make a step uh, voltage and then measure the current and then we can recover the inductance and we can measure the current and the voltage and then we can uh, compute the impedance. This is uh, uh, something uh, explained on uh, on um, Ask the Expert uh, session. You can find the video in YouTube. But uh, in flux and flux motor, we favored the, the method using the magnetic flux measurement. Uh, why? Because this method is really adapted more adapted for uh, to capture nonlinearities and saturation versus current supply and position of the rotor if you are dealing with a rotating machine. It's uh, easy to set up because it's in magnetostatic and uh, it allows us to compute self and mutual inductances in this, uh, in this case, which is really useful and this is why we, we prefer to use this, uh, this method. So let's see now how to compute inductance and measure them for a PMSM a motor. Uh, in flux, there are uh, a macro uh, to uh, extract these lookup tables, so we use uh, magnet, uh, magnetostatic computation. There is also, uh, so this is uh, versus current and versus position, but there is also a feature which is uh, called inductance matrix, and it, com it computes for a given current supply, the inductance uh, versus rotor position, so it gives uh, the self and mutual inductance. The same mot method used in uh, for the macro is the one used for alter flux motor, uh, where we can uh, as well extract this all these inductances, uh, dynamic static inductances, uh, and uh, for the four quadrant uh, and for uh, keeping uh, or considering rotor position dependency. So this is the same method. And uh, actually, uh, what we do uh, inside is uh, first in magnetostatic we uh, vary ID and IQ. So this ID and IQ is transformed to a I, A, B, C, the three phase, and then we supply the three phases, we uh, move the, the rotor position, we recover the flux on the three phases, and then we, uh, using this magnetic flux, we uh, make a park transformation in order to go back to FD and FQ. Then we have FD and FQ depending on the rotor position and the current ID and IQ. We can plot then this map. So from this map of uh, FD and FQ, we can compute first the static inductance, which is FD minus phi zero uh, divided by the current GD. This is for LD and LQ is FQ uh, divided by GQ, current uh, supply in Q axis. You can see that here in the D axis, we uh, we make minus phi zero, which is the, the magnetic flux corresponding to the magnet. So we, uh, what does it mean here? It means that we consider the saturation uh, induced by the, the, the magnet, but without uh, the magnetic flux due to the magnet itself. So we consider only the magnetic flux due to the coil uh, supply and the saturation induced by the magnet. So this is a kind of a frozen permeability for the flux user and uh, it allows us to consider this uh, magnet magnetic state due to the to the magnet. So for uh, the dynamic inductance there is simply a delta phi by delta id and this uh, for d axis and q axis and we compute as well the cross uh, inductances so uh, in each time we consider the impact of the opposite axis the d axis on the q axis and uh, the q axis on the d axis so here as you can see we make delta phi d by delta g d, uh, gq right so this is uh, to take into account the cross impact between d axis and q axis actually yeah, for the measurement, uh, the measurement there is uh, this standard method which we use a short circuit test and open circuit test. But unfortunately, this method allow us only to measure LD, and uh, there are. Uh, 
lot of articles in the literature that use this method uh, or extend this method to uh, make a measurement of uh, LQ. So if we make a standard method then uh, which allow us to compare the measurement and the simulation then please use this uh, this standard method in, in order to be confident on your simulation. We want to, to make a comparison. Inductance for a wound field uh, synchronous machine, uh, computation and measurement. Uh, so this is uh, mainly a stamp steel frequency response method. Uh, this is easy to set up from measurement point of view and easy to set up from simulation point of view. This method uh, will allow us to compute inductance on D axis and the inductance on Q axis. It allows us to compute time constants and uh, it allows us also to compute the, uh, the inductances of the dampers if they are if they are if they are considered in your machine. Yeah. For induction machine uh, there is well known single phase equivalent scheme. This is uh, uh, something we obtain from uh, short circuit test and open circuit test. Yeah, so this is given automatically from a flux motor. And uh, this is the one given by a flux motor. But if we want to have a split of, of the inductances, the leakage inductance on the rotor and the leakage inductance on the, on the stator, then we need to use the method or to refer to the international standard where it describes uh, how to split these uh, two inductances. Okay, uh, so SSFR method is also applied flux motor and it gives you automatically the this scheme. So this method is more adapted, this scheme, sorry, is more adapted to have, to capture dynamic behavior of the, the machine. And this one is more adapted to, uh, for uh, steady state uh, of the machine. Yeah. And uh, this is all for, for me. Uh, I, I wanted to put three uh, points here. Uh, when it comes to computation of an uh, inductances, uh, it's really important to know which model, which uh, reduced order model we want to use. Then uh, we, we know which inductances uh, we want to compute. If we know which inductances we know we know to compute, then we uh, know how to compute them using uh, flux or uh, from the simulation. Uh, so we, we will not be lost. Uh, lost, sorry, uh, when it comes to compare measurement to simulation and uh, when it comes to uh, analyze the results from our uh, reduced order. Mode. That's all for me. If you have any question, please put them on the chat. Thank you very much for your attention.